Hello and welcome back. Standing here with a 2017 Chevy Bolt about to do DC fast charge test. Now this isn't any 2017 Chevy Bolt. This car had the brand new battery replacement done just yesterday. My friend Stan picked it up and we did a 70 mile an hour highway range test. That video is already up on my channel where we compared how far we went with the brand new battery to how far Stan went a week earlier with his older degraded battery that had 73,000 miles on it. So if you're interested in that, check my channel. That video has already been posted. But now we're gonna do a full zero to 100% DC fast charge session and see how this Bolt handles DC fast charging with its new battery pack. Has GM massaged the DC fast charging curve? Did they leave it the way it was for the previous battery? We're gonna find that out and as always, we're gonna have the full recording, we're gonna analyze it, make some charts and graphs and just see how well the Bolt EV DC fast charges. But first, please don't forget, Click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. Okay, so before we jump into the DC fast charge recording, I wanna talk a little bit about the Bolt DC fast charging capability. The Bolt is limited to 55 kilowatt of DC fast charging power. It actually is one of the slowest charging electric vehicles you can get today. Now there's a few EVs that accept less than 55 kilowatt, but they have small battery packs. The Bolt has a large 66 kilowatt hour battery pack. With a battery of that size, you really should have faster DC fast charging. I really do like the Bolt EV. I've recommended it to friends of mine, but I wouldn't recommend it to somebody that does frequent long road trips because it's gonna take a long time to DC fast charge, whereas there are other EVs that are similarly priced that can charge much faster. So if you're gonna be getting an EV and you think you're gonna to need to do a lot of road trips that cover hundreds of miles, you might not wanna look at the Bolt. The Bolt's a great EV if you're primarily gonna be charging at home. And quite honestly, home charging is really the most convenient way to recharge your EV. And it's the least expensive. When you charge at home, you're gonna pay less than what you will when you charge on the road. Most people only wanna charge at DC fast chargers when they have to, when they're on long road trips. Now, when you do charge your EV at home, you wanna make sure that you have good charging equipment and that it's installed properly. The Bolt EV, the 2022 Bolt EV and EUV comes with free standard installation of your home charging equipment. It comes with the car. Now, it's for a limited time. Chevrolet hasn't announced exactly how long this special is going to run for, but if you get a Bolt or EV or EUV now, it comes with complimentary installation of your home charging equipment. Standard installation. If you have a very complex job, you'll have to pay the difference of what a standard installation is compared to what your particular home uses. And General Motors has partnered with Qmerit for this home installation offer. Qmerit's also a sponsor of my channel here, and I partnered with them recently because they really are the installation professionals for home charging equipment, home energy storage, solar electric, whatever you really need in your home electric-wise, Qmerit is there to do the installation. And I bring this up because I know a lot of people like to do their own installation of home electric charging equipment. There's a lot of people that are do-it-yourselfers. I'm a do-it-yourselfer. I like to do whatever I can myself at home. But the one thing I urge people not to do is install your home electric vehicle charging equipment. And that's because your EV charging equipment is going to draw a lot of power, more power than the rest of your house is actually consuming. And it does that for many continuous hours. And Quite often it's overnight when you're sleeping, the worst time to have some kind of a problem. So if you are getting an electric vehicle, I urge you to get a qualified licensed electrician to have your home electric vehicle equipment installed. And you can 
Start with QMerit. The link is in the description of this video. They'll give you a free estimate to install your home charging equipment. Of course, if you get a 2022 Bolt EV or EUV, you don't have to pay anything because it comes with the car. So anyway, let's jump now into the DC Fast Charge recording and we'll see just how long it takes to charge the Bolt EV on a DC Fast Charger. When we first plug in, the Bolt is taking in 47 kilowatt and takes five minutes to reach 50 kilowatt. After 10 minutes of charging, the Bolt is at 12% state of charge and is now pulling 52 kilowatt. After 20 minutes, it's at 25% state of charge and it's still charging at 52 kilowatt. In 30 minutes, the state of charge is now at 38% and the charge rate continues to be 52 kilowatt. We reach 50% state of charge in 40 minutes, but the Bolt is now only charging at 45 kilowatts, already starting to ramp down. After 50 minutes, we're at 60% state of charge, and the Bolt is only pulling 33 kilowatt. Now, we usually recommend charging until 80% on a DC fast charger, then unplugging and moving on. But with the Bolt EV, it charged so slowly that I really think that I'd unplug at 60% unless I really needed the extra range because from here on out, it's really slow going. Now at the one hour mark, the Bolt is at 67% state of charge and is taking in 27 kilowatt. Now 27 kilowatt is pathetic for a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack at only 67% state of charge, in my opinion. Now it reaches 80% state of charge in 81 minutes and is now accepting only 18 kilowatt. It takes an hour and 48 minutes to reach 90% state of charge. And then it takes another 38 minutes to go from 90% to 99% when the charging station just gave up and ended the charging session. I think it was probably as tired as I was from pressing the reset button every 60 seconds to clear the timeout screen. Let's take a look at the charge summary. The station dispensed 67 kilowatt hour. It took two hour and 26 minutes to fully charge it. We were billed $21.82. Yikes, two hours and 26 minutes. That is pretty painful. But I will remind everybody, Almost nobody is going to charge from zero to 100%. We do that here to map out the full charging curve. So it's really not fair to say, oh, the Bolt EV takes two hours and 26 minutes to charge because almost nobody is going to do that. Most people are going to plug in at a low state of charge if they're on a road trip, maybe 10%, 5%, somewhere like that, and then charge up to about 80%, unplug and move on. So, you know, the two hours and 26 minutes Really, it's kind of unfair to say it takes that long to charge. And I know technically it does, but almost nobody is going to be staying there from zero to 100%. In any event, let's take a look at how that looks on paper now because I've mapped it out so we can take a look at the full charging curve. Okay, so let's check out how that looks when we put it on paper. As you can see, when we plug in, we're pulling about 47 kilowatt. And that gradually increases up until around 40% uh, state of charge when it jumps up to 54 kilowatt. Now, that's the most we have saw during the whole charging session. Now, the stated maximum charge rate is 55 kilowatt, but we did not see that at all during the entire charging session. As you can see, at about the 44% state of charge point, the charge rate starts to decrease. And we begin this pretty consistent ramp down till around 55% state of charge. Now at that point, we're only accepting 36 kilowatt. That's terrible for a car with a 66 kilowatt hour battery pack to only be pulling 36 kilowatt at 55% state of charge. Now it level offs for a few minutes here before beginning another pretty consistent drop off all the way down to 100% state of charge. With the exception of this one little short spike here for a couple of minutes where the charging rate increased. But as you can see here, pretty much from 44% to 100%, it's a relatively steady, consistent drop off until the vehicle is fully charged. 
Next up, let's take a look at the time to charge chart. This is really the most important chart that we make because quite honestly, when it comes down to it, all people really care about is how long do I have to stay there and charge to get X amount of miles? And with the time to charge chart, we explain that. Here we have the time in minutes on the X axis and the state of charge on the Y. You can see here that it takes two hours and 26 minutes to completely charge from zero to 100%. Notice in the beginning how the line gradually climbs horizontally as much as it does vertically. That's because the bolt's low charging rate. Usually, when we look at this graph, the first 20 to 40 minutes of charging has a much more aggressive vertical climb before the line flattens out. But the bolt's meager 55 kilowatt charge rate means that even at a low state of charge, it's not even adding a kilowatt hour per minute of charging. On the other hand, some of the new EVs that we test can charge at rates as high as 200 to 300 kilowatt, and they add four to five kilowatt hour for every minute they're charging at a low state of charge. Now let's take a look at how long it takes to add back miles of driving range. I'm showing it in two ways. One is based on the EPA range rating of 259 miles, and the other is based on the range test that I did with the car that ended with 190 miles driven. We did that in early March and it was pretty cold, so owners will have an idea of about how fast you can add back miles in the winter months. So to add back 100 miles of EPA rated range, it took us 31 minutes. If you use my cold weather range test, it took 11 minutes more and we finished at the 42 minute point. 150 miles added EPA takes 48 minutes. And if you use my range test, it takes an hour and 20 minutes. 200 miles EPA is added in an hour and 17 minutes, and we never actually reached 200 miles in my range test, so that point is not shown on the chart. The last thing I'd like to show is the 10% to 80% charge window that so many people like to use to compare EVs. Here the Bolt took 73 minutes and averaged 2.48 miles added per minute on the EPA scale and 1.8 miles added per minute according to my cold weather range test. All right, well, that's all we have for our Chevy Bolt EV DC fast charge analysis. Now, I do want to remind everybody, this was done on a 2017 Bolt with a new battery pack upgrade, the replacement under warranty for the recall that the Bolts had. We're not certain if that same charging profile is going to be carried over for the new 2022 Bolt EV and EUV. We think it should be, but we're not certain. I am going to get a hold of a Bolt EV soon in the coming months and do full DC fast charge recordings. That's a brand new 2022 Bolt EV and probably even a new Bolt EUV. And I'll do the DC fast charge recordings on both. The charging profile should be the same for the two, but we're still going to take a look at it anyway. And I want to remind everybody, although the Bolt EV isn't a great DC fast charging electric vehicle, as a matter of fact, it's pretty poor at DC fast charging, as you can see from this video, most people aren't going to really need to DC fast charge that often. They're going to charge at home. And in that regards, the Bolt EV is a great EV at a really good price. And I do recommend it to a lot of my friends. A couple of my friends have bought them very happy with them. It's just not great if you need to go on really long road trips or quite honestly, if you live in an apartment, you can't charge at home or work. So you're gonna rely on public infrastructure for charging. It might not be the best electric vehicle choice. There's a lot of other EVs out there that can charge a lot quicker. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, please click that subscribe button, bring the notification bell, so you don't miss any upcoming content, and thanks for watching.